Okay, great guys. We're going to uh, do a classic stack uh, overflow uh, and exploitation uh, of a Kali program. Uh, it's a real Kali program, uh, but we'll recompile it without mitigations, and it's not a privileged uh, program. So an example of stack exploitation, but not a privileged program. So let's install the program. Already have it installed. And the way to trigger this exploit, or the way to trigger this crash is just to There we go. So we've got a, a crash with a long home environment variable. Let's download the source. And I'll just make sure that my <laughs> internet is working. So we'll go into tab text. Buffer overflow, very simple buffer overflow. And this is our buffer overflow here on this particular line. Just copying into the home local buffer. So length 80, copying the environment directly into that buffer and then corrupting the stack and the return address and then when we leave the function towards the end here we'll trigger that buffer overflow detection or stack canary. So let's recompile this 32-bit uh, without mitigations uh, and then we'll write an exploit for it. You first might need to um, add the appropriate packages to your system and add 32-bit support x86. So this is sort of the what you would type uh, to, to get your environment set up from a Kali install. So let's look at the, the make file. So let's just move this, we don't want that. So we, we don't want to use ASLR, so recompile that. We don't want uh, stack canaries. We want to compile it 32 bit, so that's the M32 for 32 bit. No stack protector, um, and remove that Fortify source, and then no SLA, ASLR uh, with no pi. So let's make that. There we go. That's our program running. Let's check that our overflow still works. Great. Now we've got a segmentation fault instead of that uh, buffer overflow detected. Let's let's copy this binary into this upper level directory. There we go. We also want to turn on an executable stack for a classic stack overflow. So you need to install this package as well. And we can see that it's turned on. There we go, an executable stack. So we know that a buffer of 2,000 uh, characters will cause this program to crash. So we're going to use uh, a Metasploit tool called Pattern Create to create a cyclic pattern. Uh, 
uh, and then we'll we'll see where we go from there. So export home. Use our command line completion. Pattern create. We'll set the length of this pattern to 2000 bytes. Great. Takes a little while to run. So now we're going to start our program. I'm going to run it. Great. We got a seg fault, and you can sort of intuitively tell that that's ASCII. So that's what we're after. Let's with our query, which is um, this one here. Exact match offset at 312. So let's have a look actually just at our What would happen if we actually just left it with A's? This is sort of the classic 444. Four, four. So we can see that those are our A's. So that's why we ran our cyclic pattern. And it said that it was at offset 312. Okay. That's good. So let's create our exploit. To use Python buffer equals a times three hundred and twelve. It's good. The next thing that we want to do is uh, have our payload. So we're going to use MSF Venom. I'm going to have a NOP slot of 100 bytes, um, otherwise it's sort of uh, the, the, the shellcode requires that the stack and the IP aren't, aren't together. We're going to use a reverse TCP shell. We have bad characters, so no null bytes. No new lines or carried returns as well. Do. This is where it's um, this reverse TCP shell is connecting to, and we'll do that to payload.bin. I'll just make a copy of that so you guys can see it. That looks like it worked. Good. And that's our payload. Let's go into our exploit. So, classic stack overflow, we're overwriting the return address. We don't have ASLR on, well, we don't have a, a position independent binary where ASLR will take effect. So one thing we can do is instead of returning to 
uh, hard-coded address where we can return to a gadget which jumps into our shellcode. We've got an executable stack, so that's quite okay. So let's start dev again. Uh, going to use uh, our Peter. Okay, great. So I'm just going to set a breakpoint and start. You probably don't really need to do this, but here we go. And now we're looking for a gadget, which is a jump. Um, I'll just show you this. So it's a jump ESP. So if we make our return address here, there we go. Good. Let's add our jump ESP address. We'll add our shell code. Now the next thing we want to do is uh, run the program with our environment variable. So. Dev. That's good. Now we'll launch our program. That's that's the program that we're launching. Now we're getting into the argument vector. There we go. So let's have a look at it. Got our shell code. We filled our buffer. We've got our return address, which is a gadget to jump to our shell code, and then we've got our shell code. That looks good. So let's do our reverse listen on port. Four four three. Oh, run our exploit. Classic uh, mistake. Let's run our exploit. Looks good. Do we have a shell? Yes, we do. Great. Perfect. So running as root because Kali runs everything as root and there's no privileges with this particular program. But a classic stack overflow uh, with an executable stack, no ASLR, and no stack canaries on 32 bit x86. On a real program in Kali, a real package that has a legitimate bug. Um, but is otherwise not privileged. So thanks very much. And I'll see you next time.